Okay, so now that we've looked at the application of why you need one and what sort of uses, let's take a little bit more of an in-depth look at the specifications. So to start off with here, I've just got the, uh, the DC to DC 40 plus, which is the 12 volt output version. We do also have a specific 24 volt output version. So the 24 volt output version is a maximum output of 30 amps. The 40 plus, why do we say 40 plus? It can actually output a maximum of 50 amps. Now there's a few things to consider there. One is obviously the state of charge of the battery, um, that if it's full, it's not going to output 50 amps, for example. Secondly is also the voltage output from your alternator. And lastly is also the voltage that is actually getting to the DC to DC unit um, through your cabling. And we'll touch on that a little bit later on. Another key feature uh, of the DC to DC 40 plus and also the, uh, the DC to DC 24 volt unit is it's got an inbuilt MPPT solar regulator. So great benefit of that unit there. Um, as for the sort of spec side of that, it can handle 45 volts open circuit. So what does that mean? It's one of the, uh, the few DC to DC or even solar regulators on the market that will allow you to use household panels. Now, as a guide, some of the wattage ratings on there, if you're using, say, a typical, say, 12 volt um, panel, which has actually got around about a 20, uh, 20 volt open circuit value, we limit the unit to around about the 600 watts mark there. Or if you're using those household panels that are up around that 40 odd volts, um, that we have a max limit there of around about the 800 watts. Um, again, in the manual, plenty of information about maximising your solar harvesting there throughout the day and what size panels as well. And also look on our website for more information in relation to parallel or series panels configurations as well. Now, one of the questions we do get asked quite often, uh, is the unit waterproof, is the unit dustproof? Um, short answer to that is no. Now what we do however recommend with our DC to DC 40 pluses um, and our 24 volt one is install them in a dry location and we actually recommend installing them close to the actual auxiliary battery itself. Reason for that, keeping this charge cable here nice and short and therefore where it's actually sensing the voltage from so the charger knows at what capacity the battery is reduces any voltage drop there. So that's why we like to see these installed in the back of a ute canopy for example or right next to the battery in a caravan application. Um, on the bottom here, you can see our main connection points here. So starting off this side, we've got the battery input side. We'll come back to this little fella in a second. We've got the battery input side from your start battery there as an example. We've then got solar input there with the inbuilt regulator, and then we've got straight out to it. You'll see we've got lovely large connections here. Six mil lug terminals um, are fitted to this allows for large cable as well. No need for inline joiners or anything like that on the input or output cables. Direct, easy connections, nice large cabling. We've also got the input ignition um, connection there as well, which we'll discuss a little bit later on. 